Okay, in this lesson, we're going to take a little bit of a detour and we're going to take a look at form validation. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have is we can enter things that are missing uh, key elements. Uh, for example, maybe we skip a description or a name uh, and that's not necessarily good. So what we need to do is provide a little bit more uh, guidance uh, and validation and if you've looked up how to do non-reactive regular forms with ng-model, you'll notice there's things like a min and a max and pattern properties you can place on your elements. But actually, um, we're trying to use reactive forms here. And so I wanted to spend a few minutes just going over how reactive forms do validation. Um, so we're going to start by taking a look at our create chachi component here. And let's look at our, our first issue. The first issue is the ng on init we're using a really lame uh, form builder. It's just simply the values that we're setting for the defaults, the starting points for our form values. We can get a little bit more complex here. And so I'm going to replace this with something a little more sophisticated. There we go. And so this uh, example right here is using an import called validators which I'll, as I'll show you here is coming in from the angular forms library, even though it's really a reactive forms feature that you'll use it for, for the most part, you will even use it in a non-reactive form component uh, uh, directive. If you're building a directive for validators. But the bottom line is validators is a, uh, TypeScript object with some static methods on it, like required and max length. Interestingly, the uh, methods that actually work right out of the box, like required, are actually method references to the actual validator ready to go. But the max length or max or min uh, or pattern validators actually don't work without getting some parameters. So validators dot max length or dot min or max or pattern actually are functions that produce the validator when they're given the parameters needed to do the validation. For example, validators dot max length 60. Uh, and I'm skipping some other stuff, but let's just talk about these two things in the chain. So the name property starts empty and it's immediately invalid because the validators required is attached to it. And then after that, the validators max length is attached saying it can be no less, uh, no more rather than 60 characters. Now we put them in an array because you've got one position in the outer array. So it's kind of complex, but there's an outer array for each set of settings for a field. And the first position of that outer array is the initial value. The second position is our synchronous validation methods. And our third position, if we provide it, is asynchronous validation, which we're not providing at the moment. But you can see now that name, if now we you know how to read this, is going to have two validators in the synchronous position. And so they allow you to put an array of validators in that spot. There used to be a validators.compose method. I think it's still there, which basically produces an array but you no longer need it in Angular, I think 4.3 and higher. I could be wrong about that version number, but the bottom line is now I've got a name, I've got a description that is required and this max length is pretty big. And then I've got a price which is required and notice instead of max length, I use max and min for numeric ranges in validators. And in both of those, they each return a function that will fail validation if we're below the minimum or above the maximum. And so that's the validation process. And so even with that being done right now, we hit save, we actually do have validation errors being active on our form. Now, what's interesting is you won't actually see any kind of things happening around that. So if I say negative 234, negative 234, whatever, you don't actually see any kind of validation errors, but they're there. In fact, if we inspect, you're going to see ng invalid is one of the properties. You know, the, the form controls mark what's going on 
with directives, uh, I'm sorry, with, with uh, style classes like ng dirty, ng invalid, ng touched. And notice the form itself, if we went all the way up to the form, um, has a class of ng invalid. So first things first, let's light up our form and show what happens when the form is not valid. Now you would be, um, it's understandable if you would decide that you want to place styles in here alongside of the selector and template, but you'd be wrong for doing it there unless you have a very specific set of error validation visibility uh, settings for one component. And that's because each component namespaces itself and all of its styles so that you won't get those styles bleeding out. So I want to place some styles in the global style sheet, which I'm currently using regular old CSS for. Um, and it's an input which has a class of ng invalid and has been touched, goes to red. And also we have a text area control too. And we can do this with select and with other things as well, but for now that's all we need. And what we're doing there is we're going to set the color to red and we're going to have for is invalid, which is something we're going to put together, um, a little kind of form thing, a color of red as well. But for now, let's go take a look at our component now when we run this. So it's going to refresh. And the minute I type into something and I leave it, you can see that the validation is now invalid. And if I get rid of price, that's invalid. And if I get rid of quantity on hand or I make it negative 234, or greater than the number we're expecting, which I don't think that actually has a greater than amount, but price does. So you get the picture. So now we have a way of at least visibly seeing that it's not valid. Another thing we could do is we could come along over here and we could make it so that the actual form itself, the button is insensitive. And so I could say disabled as a bound property, not just a single uh, initial value, but a bound property with brackets is equal to form group dot invalid. Whoops. And if we hit save, now when we go back, if the form is invalid, this is grayed out. I can't even submit the form until I get valid data in here. And if something does make it valid or invalid, all right, oh, there it is, it's invalid. Remember I've got it on invalid and touched, so I have to leave the field in order to show the validation error, which is a pretty common thing for people to do. Now I can create a new tchotchke. So I've made it so that I've got this tchotchke uh, form protected. And now I just wanna go back and give myself a little bit better style for the form. Um, I'm using Twitter Bootstrap for my form layout, as I mentioned before. And uh, I'm gonna just add some markers to it so that I have a little bit more detail. So we'll take from the first one, which is the name form, and we'll paste in a div. And notice I make the div kind of uh, have a message that's generic. And the reason I do that is there can be many reasons why the control fails. Um, validation and unless you want to sit there and write 20 if statements it may be more expedient to just have a a statement of what is valid in the uh, output of the ng if so our ng if will only show if the control is invalid and it's been touched so it kind of goes along with our style sheet and notice how we check it tchotchkes form group dot controls now you could technically do dot name um, but I've noticed the style uh, syntax checker isn't a fan of this. Uh, you actually can get some, some syntax checking things because there's no valid property called um, name.invalid. The right way to do it is to refer to it with its bracketed name. And that's fine. Either way is fine if you don't mind little squiggles in there, but you might get a validation error in your IDE. Um, the, they added the regular dot property name recently. I'm assuming at some point the uh, syntax checker will be up to snuff in the 
uh, web storm editor that I'm using. But Chosky form group controls name, if it's there and it's invalid or and it's touched, then we show it and we change the text to red. That's where our class is invalid is. And now if I just walk away from this thing, whoops, pardon me. If I walk away from this field without putting valid in. Now I show that little diff, uh, div rather at the bottom. You can go through and do the same thing for the other fields. So now here's the one for our text area. Description. There we go. Good information here. Uh, it's not the most robust error handling system. I personally would love it if we could get the parameters out and construct our own arguments, uh, but I haven't found an easy way to do that. I'm sure there are some crazy ways someone will come up with, but uh, bottom line is it, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, let's get the price one in here. And then we have quantity on hand. And it looks good. Fantastic. So there you go. Now we've got form validation with decent messages and we've got our actual submit button being sensitized against uh, the disabled property. I hope you find these useful. And if you're looking for on-site training, advice, mentoring, or technical help with any area of your full stack development efforts, head over to chariotsolutions.com to check out our services. Thank you. Thank you.